World War I, there were two styles of aircraft engines. Water-cooled inline engines such as this Hispano Sousa V8, 140 horsepower, which powered the SE5. And the other was the air-cooled rotary engine, which powered aircraft like the DR1, the Camel, and the Newport. Now the rotary engine is a totally different design concept to the modern radial engine. A radial engine is bolted to the airframe, while on a rotary engine the whole engine spins around a central shaft. A pilot flying an inline water-cooled aircraft would have to worry about temperatures, overheating or overcooling, and lubrication of his engine. Whereas the rotary engine pilot had none of these issues. And this is where I got confused, because down on the left hand side of the camel is a throttle quadrant, on which I can adjust both the mixture and the power. But if the engine is always running at full RPM, what am I adjusting? And the same question comes when we jump into the DR1. We have a mixture control and then we have another control that's on the control column. So I found the answer in a 2004 post from Triple Hound. Where on the topic of a rotary throttle, he has the following to say. Not a throttle like in your car, but a way of increasing or decreasing the amount of fuel mixture fed to the engine in three separate steps. There was an engine air intake pipe that used something like a ball valve to regulate the amount of air going into the engine. Now, this was generally operated via a linkage from a handle in the throttle quadrant located on the left hand side of the cockpit. The amount of fuel going into this intake pipe was regulated by a fine fuel valve from a pressurized fuel tank or from a gravity tank to a jet inside the ball valve where the incoming fuel was atomized. The air ball valve acted like a venturi tube supplying suction to help move the fuel. This fine fuel valve was operated by a separate handle located in or near the throttle quadrant. The Germans seemed to favor locating the fine fuel control on the control column and operating the valve by a twist knob via the Bowden cable. Castor oil was carried in a separate tank and pumped from this tank through a sight flow regulator in the cockpit to the fuel mixture feed line as it entered the crankcase. Both air and fuel had to be increased or decreased in steps to avoid leaning or flooding, either one resulting in a dead engine. As the aircraft descended, the fuel had to be increased to avoid leaning out the engine too much and having it fail. Oil regulation didn't seem to be quite as demanding of immediate attention as the air-to-fuel mixture, but it was still necessary. The Q button, or blip switch, allowed quick changes in engine speed by cutting ignition to all the cylinders. On landing, for example, the engine was adjusted to takeoff power, then the Q button was used to cut the engine for brief intervals to decrease the speed for landing. If the button was held for too long, the unburned fuel and oil mix would flood the engine to where it wouldn't start when the button was let go. And or the worst case, the expelled unburned fuel mix would catch fire in the cowling. And here's a copy of that transcript. And what he's referring to here is the earlier rotary engines like the Gnome Monosapapi, the 80 horsepower. In this case, using the blip switch would interrupt the ignition into three or six of the cylinders. And my understanding now is that both sides, by 1917, the period of the game, had throttle and mixture controls for their engines. And the blip switch was still connected, but they rarely used it. So both the fuel and the lubricating oil were exhausted through the ports. There was no oil recovery system. The lubricating oil of choice back then was castor oil, a vegetable oil. This oily mist would be brought back to the pilot by the slipstream 
and he would ingest and inhale it. And as a result, it wasn't unusual for a lot of the pilots to have diarrhea. Not really the kind of thing you'd want to be thinking about in the middle of a dogfight. J5's Manfred, he says he likes to use the blip switch because it's an instant reduction in power when he's in a dogfight. I have the engine start button, the E key, programmed to my throttle, and I just use that as a blip switch if I need it. If you've enjoyed this video and get some value out of it, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe and like and all those usual things. But if you want to see more of these videos, specifically with the IL-2 uh, Battle of Stalingrad, I've got about 150 training videos for you to look at. So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.